welcome friends i am very happy to see all of you here for this monthly meeting we usually have a smaller number but i know you are here because of the holiday party coming tomorrow so we are all in a holiday spirit today is my lucky day i retired from my job many years ago finally retired in 1962 at at age 62 and now it is 92 today i got a new job <laughs> i just attended the board of directors meeting of a company called mirabai products incorporated and they voted the board voted to give me from next year the job of chairman president and ceo of that company not it not usual for a 92 year old to find a job <laughs> so i thought i'll share my good news with you how it happened because it's a long story many years ago when i was working in india i happened to be a commercial manager of a government entity called the food corporation of india and at that time we used to import lot of food and so i got an experience in handling food so i became little bit of an expert in understanding nutrition and food so in 1970 United Nations Children's Fund UNICEF for short were looking at large stocks of soybean in the United States going to waste soybean was being used as an animal feed but having so much high protein they thought it could also be made into human food so therefore they set up a team and picked up a few people to set up the team i happened to head that team myself as an administrator of the team and a couple of nutritionists and we examined what we could do to make an animal feed into a human food so we decided to try out working with soy isolate soy protein and use it on the children in southeast asia india Vietnam Cambodia Myanmar Pakistan all those countries which were very starved children were mal malnourished the world health organization had coined a term called pm protein malnutrition and those are all countries identified with protein malnutrition and we were to see if we can use the high protein soybean surplus in the united states can be used to provide protein to them so we experimented by taking protein from here and when we fed those starving children in different countries they did not put on any weight and we wondered how protein is not putting on weight and we discovered that the protein was being burnt like carbohydrates it was burnt like fat by burnt like anything and because they were short even in calories they didn't have enough calories to survive so the protein was becoming calories so the world health organization on my report renamed the protein malnutrition from pm to pcm protein calorie malnutrition so we discovered that the soybean that was being sent from here very little part of the protein was actually being assimilated and apart from the fact that they were malnourished they also another fact was found in the protein soy protein itself that the bean had something lining inside the cover which made it hard and indigestible something lining inside called trypsin inhibitor trypsin inhibitor inhibited the protein from being absorbed the calories from being absorbed by the body so they were being burnt so 
I was one of the team members. We designed a way by which we could remove the TRIPS inhibitor or at least deactivate it. And so we found simple processes of heating it certain temperature, keeping it for a certain pressure, and it could deactivate. And the protein available went up from 20% availability to 80% availability. We were very successful. That worked in Southeast Asia. We were able to make protein uses. Chinese, Hong Kong particularly, had a new drink called based on soybean. They, it all became popular in beverages as well as in food. And textured food began to come in as a meat substitute. It was an interesting development in the 70s and 80s. When I came to United States, I found they are not trying to take away, to add something to calories and protein, but they wanted to avoid calories. This country was racing for how to avoid calories. And then it struck to me that here we are trying to put calories and proteins and calories the same combination. And this country, United States, is trying to avoid calories. Why not extract that TRIPS inhibitor and use it in any other food to see if you can digest the other food better because the TRIPS inhibitor will inhibit what your food body doesn't like. When I studied this subject, it was very interesting that trypsin was being produced by the body itself in the pancreas. Pancreas produced the trypsin and also produced insulin. And people, we had been studying insulin for so many years because of the cases of diabetes. And diabetic insulin was common. We made synthetic insulin. No study was being done on trypsin which was controlling what else you could digest. The body was using trypsin to digest all food that we put into the stomach. So when we decided to experiment, does the trypsin inhibitor, if we can extract it separately and add it to other food, will it inhibit the absorption of extra food that we eat? Especially in a country like United States, who we found were all eating more than they needed. Obesity was on the rise even at that time. So it was a big thing. So that is why I was able to make some progress in extracting TRIPS inhibitor, which is a very difficult process, but I was able to achieve it and use that in simple food that was popular in this country called cookies. We used to call them biscuits in India, but they became cookies here. And when we added those to the cookies, people kept on eating so many cookies without gaining weight. And some even lost weight by eating our cookies. This is amazing. This all happened, so we set up a corporation called All Star Foods and began to market the cookies, and they went very well. So we were making jumbo cookies and put a high price because it contained special ingredient. So that was the business in which I had started, but then my two partners who worked with me fell foul of the IRS but not paying taxes or something. We had to close the businesses. Now, recently, this Mirabai Products Incorporated, which was a division of All Star Foods, separated and is now dealing with the very same product. And we are going to use the same product in several foods and beverages so that is the job which they have entrusted to me from next year. I'm very happy to accept this challenge. All that will happen will be that I had divested myself of all stock of all companies just to concentrate on doing Seva to Great Master by having these meetings and by traveling to different places where they were seekers. So now I have got permission from Great Master that yes, because this was your idea, let it not die and you can take on this job. So with this permission, this morning, I agreed to accept the job of a company which will use the same product in many ways. Of course, I will need a lot of support. I'll be looking forward to the next year, at least the beginning of six months of the next year, I'm planning to look for talent that can help me and incorporate it in my company. 
that's what i did last time i got some good people and some talented people in marketing in branding packaging experts i have learnt all these but at harvard university i went to business school so we have theoretical knowledge some i applied also but i'll be looking forward to that so next year i'll be doing something in addition to what i am doing here and just wanted to share all this information with you and i'll be looking for talent and looking for investors also so we i'll i'll open up the investment opportunity uh, next year when i take over the company and i'm sure there are many very talented people and good people who will come and help me to make it a success so this is all the good news i wanted to share with you in the beginning but let me tell you that this adventure going back into making money should not mean that i should at any time think this is more important than the most important thing which we have the possibility as a human being to search the truth within ourselves this body won't last forever riches don't go with us at all nothing that we make here ever goes with us but what we do by discovering the immortal truth of our own self will always be with us that's why it's very important people are very busy doing their jobs i'll also be very busy doing my job but i'll never forget this that this is only a job to survive here while we are here this is not a real job for long term long term job is to find that which is not temporary this body is temporary some people say oh we have a soul inside that is immortal i have asked many people do you believe there is a soul inside yes have you seen it no if you haven't seen a soul what makes you think there is a soul inside what evidence do you have that there is a soul inside you constantly talking oh there is a soul that person died his soul went somewhere else that person is reincarnated somebody's soul has come when i first came here this was a very big subject what we were in our past lives and many friends of mine told me they had done past life regressions to find out who they were in a past life i found so many girls who told me they were cleopatra in the past life <laughs> and so many men were big kings and big, big big people personalities from history and i saw what a game these people play who say there is a regression recession and regression to into past life and they always give you very good names who you were and the one person told me they were all the great people in the world in their past life <laughs> what game i said you have no idea at all have you remembered anything is there anybody who's claiming to have knowledge of past life actually personally remembered what they were no then this is all just a game being played by some people here some scamsters some of these just scams most of them so but i said there is a way by which you can know your past life personally not by other people's evidence your own awareness your own knowledge now that was big news for some friends of mine that we don't have to go to somebody to say please tell me what i was in my past life don't go to an astrologer or a palmist or somebody they'll palm you off but go to somebody who can tell you how to discover your own memory of past lives clearly like you can remember that you entered this hall like you remember where you were this morning that clearly so the method i said is a very old method of discovering your past life by going into that part of yourself which existed in the past life this body did not this was born now and will die here this body does not have the information does not have the memory of past lives if you say i can remember this you are making it up because you don't have access to it but if you go to a form of yourself a form not outside but within this form which you say is permanent inside you or some immortal soul inside whatever you think is inside if you can reach that state then you can 
remember how much you can then you can say i remember who i was because i personally now know it not because somebody has told me now that method of finding out who you are inside the human body that can remember past lives is actually a very simple one we don't try it but i can tell you and that can be achieved through good quality meditation meditation upon your own inner self that you want to awaken and to remember what you did in the past life not meditation on anything else meditating on your own self not on the body if you meditate on the body do all kind of yoga all the 84 asanas you perform you are learning a lot about this body and maybe learning a lot about life also but you are not learning a single thing about that which lies inside you and existed before the body was formed so how can you find out who you were before this body was even born you can only find out after you die sorry the best meditation when you die if you are still there ob- obviously you know you were something that were there before you were born you still there after you die we all have that experience but we can't really tell somebody if i were to tell you a little story now i say right now in this hall you can see the physical people sitting here can you see a few people who don't have physical bodies but are also sitting here or standing here you can't see them but if they are there they can see you now how is that possible that those who have lost the body have died can still see us and we can't see them where's the problem if they can see us we should be able to see them no the reason is very simple we are seeing with these eyes of a physical body we are not seeing with our eyes we are seeing with our physical eyes now what's the difference between our real eyes and these eyes i'll tell you the difference it's not difficult if you close your eyes physical eyes and imagine something you can see it how do you see that where is vision coming when you imagine something with your closed eyes how can you see things that we seeing is not these eyes if these eyes were the only one that could see when you close your eyes you would see nothing but when you close your eyes with your imagination you can see anything who is seeing you the self not somebody else the same self that is the same body is seeing something with eyes that are not the physical eyes because they are closed can you imagine that those eyes are functioning independently of these physical eyes actually the physical eyes are able to see because those other eyes are inside it if they were outside you wouldn't see in, the, in this body the fact that you can imagine something and see it visually means that there are other eyes now i am putting a proposition to you do those inner eyes have the same life as the physical eyes or a longer life when can you definitely without any doubt find out whether the inner eyes that imagine things and can see in imagination they have the same life because of same body same brain same optic nerve same things do they exist coexist with that or do they pre exist before we are born and continue to exist after we die after we die everybody finds out they still exist people tell me so many people all over the world in every country they come and tell me my mother died my grandmother died i think she's still roaming around in this house i can feel her and sometimes i can even hear some words sometimes i can and there are people trying to investigate 
with physical instruments to see things which are not physical. Physical body died. Then who is there? Are the eyes the only thing that pre-existence survive? Or do other senses also survive? Like sense of smell. Somebody says when they try to go into a room and after a little while it appears somebody is there and a strange smell comes. There is no source of that smell. Somebody is wearing some perfume, something, and they can feel it and they don't know where it's coming from. So sense of smell. People hear sounds, noises. Haunted house. They say it's haunted. There's spirits there. What are spirits? Spirits are beings with no human body. Are we also all spirits just wearing a human body? We'll find out when we die. That's a great thing that by death we find that is the truth. And those people who have died, I am sure they're trying to tell us, this body is temporary, you will still be alive when you die. But we can't hear them, we can't see them. Why can, how can they see us? Because they have eyes, not physical eyes. They have hands, not physical hands. They have ears, not physical ears. They have all sense perceptions, but not physical body. There is no difference between that form of ours already embedded in the physical body, except this physical body has an additional set of things called matter, atoms, molecules. That's all. The physical system that's been put on us is like wearing a garment. I'm wearing a sweater. I can't become a sweater. But when we wear a body, we become that body. Why? When I wear a sweater, I know I am inside the sweater and I know who I am. When we wear a human body, we forget who we are inside. And we start thinking we are the human body. That is why we are all mistaken. We are all mistaken and thinking our identity is our physical body. And a name given to the physical body is think our name. What is inside the physical body? We do not know. Yet we use it all the time. We use it through imagination all the time. We can imagine we are flying somewhere. We can imagine we are walking. We can imagine you're touching things. We can imagine smelling things. We can imagine every sense perceptions. And yet there is no physical body involved at all in any of that. And yet it's all happening in our own sense perceptions inside. It's not good enough for me to tell you that you will all find out who you really are when you die. I want to tell you that you can find out who you are even today without waiting to die, by doing something which has been called dying while living. That dying before physical death, experiencing what will happen when you die. If you can have that experience today, you will have exactly knowledge what happens when you physically die. It's a very good exercise. For more than one reason. One reason You'll be able to know in what form you existed prior to your born. You will be able to remember things that happened before you were born in this body. You'll know your real past lives personally, not by telling somebody else telling. And most of all, that you will also find that you are not dead. The body is dead. That's a big thing. And therefore, the scare the fear today of death will disappear forever. People are all afraid of death. It's so surprising how they are afraid of death when they can find that they will never die. And it's all possible by the process called dying while living. What is the process really? It's very simple. The process is what makes us know that we have a physical body now. If we look at this question, how do we know we have a physical body? Because we are awake in the physical body. When we go to sleep, we don't know. If we have a dream, we are in another body altogether. 
a dream body is running around and we are lying safely in bed we forget in a dream we can't remember where we are sleeping sometime if we find out oh we are dreaming we try to run to find our body we run nowhere the dream is taking place in the same bed where we are sleeping without having gone anywhere and we trying to run back to find where the body is therefore this whole game of creating a whole universe and an experience is dream like a dream it happens in the body where physical state it happens when we wake up to the inner body we discover this body was just made up for a physical experience now telling you the details will take me just a few minutes of how to die while living <laughs> this is not part of the thing <laughs> this is called a coincidence <laughs> that happens in death anyway it all turns into darkness <laughs> if you want to experience dying while living see a person who is dying i don't know if you ever got a chance to see a person dying i got a chance because of my age and my friends all dying i got a chance to see many people dying even dying slowly in their terminal states of illness and so on and i found that when people die they don't die all at once like we think they die in the physical bodies in stages and starts with the extremities of their body which d- disappear and die first when you see a person dying he will not know where the hands and feet have gone after a while he doesn't know where the arms and legs have gone then doesn't know where the bottom of the torso has gone he is still speaking to us and saying i'm floating in the air not floating he just lost the awareness the consciousness of the body lower part and then gradually it goes up comes to the heart level person cannot even speak but the eyes are still moving tongue cannot speak only when the brain is dead it goes right all the way up to the head person is dead completely gone body has nothing left in it so the process of dying physical dying is a withdrawal of life force a withdrawal of your awareness of the body in stages from the extremities all the way to the head head dies last now if that is so our current awareness of our body is based on the reverse of that that means we know we have a head and because of our attention and because of our awareness we know we have the rest of the body and we have arms and feet and then from there we have the whole world around us examine carefully this is all a question of awareness being extended through attention to where we want to spread it out and we have a whole awareness of this world this can be reversed if attention is spreading our awareness outside what about pulling attention back to where it's originating from we know for certainty that the attention is coming from the head the last part to die let's start from the head not any part of the head let's start from a very specific part of the head the center of the head must be very important part the center of the head the most well protected part with so much cushioning given by the gray matter and a big skull to hold it it's the most well protected part of the small little things called the pineal gland and the pituitary body the medulla oblongata those are the medical terms of the center of the head when we close our eyes and say where is our attention going out from you'll find out that is the place now reverse the process and instead of spreading your attention to see what the body is like what the world is like pull it back to that same point it's not difficult to do it if i give you a simple method of doing it very simple simple method is imagine you are there and not in the body simple that your body is like a house 
you live in. And there's a beautiful place in which you actually are living from where your attention flows and gives you the whole awareness you have a physical body. Consider that this is a house with six levels, six floors on the house. I picked up the number six floors, six because there are six energy centers that are controlling the distribution and functioning of the energies in the body. They well mentioned the six chakras. And six chakras start from the rectum, the genitals, the navel, the heart, the throat and the eyes. These have been picked up because if you study how the energies flow out in the body, they are all making circuitry around these six points. Therefore, the six levels of the energy centers in our body can be considered like six floors of our house. We are, when we are awake, sitting on the sixth floor, looking out at the world through our eyes, physical eyes. That's the house we are living in. And now we are living inside the sixth floor in the center. Let's imagine that we have a very nice place there. <coughs> All imagination. We are now going to use the inner eye, inner hands, inner body, completely for this exercise. Not this body. This body is completely still in a state of meditation. Absolutely no movement in this body. And in the inner body, we are doing all kinds of movement. We are gathering ourselves, looking around and seeing, can we jump inside the sixth floor? Wow, we can jump and hit the ceiling of the sixth floor without any weight. There is no gravity pulling us. Can you imagine the imaginary self that sits inside us, which is our own self, not somebody else? We'll never feel that somebody else is li living there. We are living there. The self is living there, our own self. If our own self can move around there, sit in the center, and think of nothing but what is around you there, what do you think will happen? Any one of you can try this experiment. If you do not think of anything outside of the body, but continuously inside the body, whether real or unreal, whether imaginary or not, whether manufactured or not, you manufacture all kinds of things there and imagine them there, but stay there. What will happen? A little while you won't know where your hands and feet are. Continue to do that. You won't know where your legs and arms have gone. Stay there longer, you won't know where the torso has gone. Exactly the same way a person dies physically. No difference. And you will achieve what is called dying while living. It's a question of withdrawal of attention to your own self. Not somewhere else. Not placing somewhere. Not going to a temple or a mosque or going to a church or going to a synagogue or finding an outside building to do it. This is the building your own house in which you can find it. Now, when you do that exercise and put your attention inside and you are more alive than ever because as you stay there, you're becoming unaware of your physical body altogether. Then what can happen to that body, which is your body? Do you know what that body has? Same thinking capacity. Same thoughts will come to you which have been coming here. Same sense perception will be there. You'll be able to see things at that level so clearly. There'll be no disability in that seeing or in functioning. The body will function perfectly. If you have trouble with the eyes now because of old age, you use glasses to read. No glasses are needed to read anything. By the way, anybody has ever tested that I have a difficult reading a newspaper but I imagine the newspaper, I read 2020, even now, any time. The inside sense perceptions are completely good at all times. It's the physical, when we embed them in the physical, they get disabilities. Not inside. Here by staying inside, just by putting attention inside, we are able to discover something that was our own self with same sense perceptions, same thoughts, same life. Everything the same. Now, if you can 
do this as a regular exercise that means you spend more and more time and more and more activities there like flying where can you fly by the way suppose you are sitting in your head what will you see somebody wrote to me this morning i have a problem when i sit in the head i am much bigger than the head not only does the head contain the whole of you it can be the whole of your universe is so big only because we think of the physical body we constrict it to the size of a head you withdraw attention from the physical body is whole new universe complete universe inside so you can fly anywhere you like can you fly into say south pole north pole can you fly to the mountains here or can you fly only into some in the imaginary things now you can fly into both how how come that when you are inside how can you fly from inside to a place physically geographically on this physical universe there is a very good reason for that inside when you withdraw your attention there is an overlap of experiences taking place an experience where you are still retaining the whole of your experience of this physical created universe and also the experience of another universe which is very different but it looks like the other universe that is there overlapping with this thing is the basis of this universe this is very crude compared to the fineness of that universe i'll give a simple example i go out and see a road being built oh they're using mortar they're using steel all, all kinds of matter that putting a surface i see the inner self and the road there is made of crystals shiny crystals shining the sun is shining it's so beautiful that's also a road this is also a road this road looks like very poor trying to copy try to imitate something that existed somewhere when you do this exercise sufficiently long you can start remembering when were you in that universe where are you in that universe which place are you in that universe and your memory will go beyond the time of your birth in this physical body that is the first time you will say i know who i was before i was born in this body the only real verifiable way to discover your past life not going to people to find out now this can be done by anybody but we don't do it why don't we do it when well, we can find who we were also remove forever the fear of death by discovering we don't die we just leave the body when you can discover this yourself right now sitting in the body why are we not doing it the reason is simple we have misidentified ourselves completely with the physical body and we have thought that the only reality that exists is this physical universe because that's what we can possibly see when we are embedded inside a physical body and not only that if this was also somebody could tell me look this is not the only thing there are some other things you can see by disassociating yourself from the body or dying while living when i try to do that i remember things of this world i ca- i can't even imagine when i start imagining i suddenly start imagining of things that happened here why is that because when we open up our eyes and open our sense perceptions to this physical world we like something so much we develop desires for more things and with desires we develop attachments we develop so many attachments that when we try to just visualize we are inside the attachments pull us out and these two things in combination a awareness this physical reality physical body is the only real thing i know at this time plus the attachments and desires of this world prevent us from doing a simple exercise and finding out who you were before you were born therefore how do we handle this if we really make it something available to everybody there should be a solution to this problem of attachments and desires 
we have a wonderful thing attached to us called a human mind. It's a good machine. We don't think it's a machine. We think it's ourselves. I was, somebody was telling me, Descartes is saying, I think, therefore I am. Because at that stage, so many philosophers were imagining that thinking is creating our knowledge of ourself. Because we can think, therefore we are existing. That thoughts are our unreality inside. And other things are all added on because of our thoughts. But this was not true. They did not examine things that were happening without thought. And we were still alive doing it. They never went into it. Three things that are totally independent of thoughts, they did not examine. One, intuitive knowing. Intuition does not function with thought. When intuition comes, thoughts are steady. Intuition very often defies thought. We are thinking of one thing. Intuitively, we say, no, that's not right. We are planning one thing with our thoughts. Intuition says, no, where is that coming from? They never examined that. If they examined, you'll find that mind that creates thoughts is only one part of our consciousness, that the other part, which is maybe more real than our own self, that what we are examining, even the mind, is our consciousness that exists without mind, which creates not only intuition, it creates the experience of love, experience of appreciation of beauty, experience of ultimate bliss. All those wonderful experiences people have described are coming without thinking. Therefore, to put the end of our own self-knowledge to thinking was a big mistake. We have been confusing the mind to be ourself, which is not true. The mind functions only in time and space. You can't have a thought. Supposing we were to take taken out of time and space, mind will die instantly. It can't function. Smallest thought needs time. And we can survive without it because love takes place instantaneously without time. Appreciation of beauty takes place instantaneously without time. Intuition comes intuitively, suddenly, spontaneously without time. We have certain functions going on in ourselves which are even beyond the mind. But the mind that has been installed in our consciousness to think is a great gift given to us to use. It's a very good gift. I appreciate this mind so much every day for its capacity to think anything, to be creative, to make inventions, discoveries. In fact, I got my job today because of my mind. So the mind is such a useful thing. We should use it if it's useful, not become it, not say, I am the mind. Now, that's a big mistake. When we identify ourselves with the mind, we forget ourselves completely, that we are not the mind, we are using the mind. Consciousness per se, life per se, exists without the mind. And there is a way by which this can, these two can be separated. That's the beauty of it. That not only when we are able to withdraw our attention inside and discover that our sense perceptions work independently. By the way, we are given a new name to those sense perceptions. When sense perceptions work with the same mind and same ultimate self, same life, then we call it an astral body. It will be commonly used. That's the astral body. So that we don't confuse it with soul. Soul is life. No body is there at all in a soul. At all. Not even astral body. So therefore we can't say soul. People mistakenly say that astral body moves from one ghostly figure to another one. That's the astral body, not the soul. That astral body is carrying its own mind. Same mind, same soul is carrying with it. Therefore it's just an astral body. Why it's called astral body? Astral refers to the sky. And there's a new sky opening up inside. Therefore, we call it astral body. So the astral body can also do the same exercise that I am recommending that we do in the physical. That means withdraw our attention to 
third eye center. We have called that center third eye center because these two eyes we are seeing, they are actually joining the images that we are seeing, two images that are coming, we are seeing in the middle, in third eye center. The center of our consciousness, the center of wakeful consciousness, the center where we think we are spreading our attention from. If with the inner body we also do the same exercise, we can also become unaware of sense perceptions and discover they were also just a body covering us. Astral body is sense perceptions on the mind and the soul. We can go beyond the astral body into the self, same self, not somebody else. Same self that is now thinking, same self that is now listening, same self that is now living in this physical world, the same self can enter a state of being where it will know sense perceptions are gone. What about perception? Perception is not sense perceptions. Perception you perceive with the mind. Sense perceptions divide the perception into senses. That discovery comes very clearly at that time when you pull yourself in the inner body and discover that the sense perceptions were merely a spread out of the perception possible in the mind. Then the mind which is thinking and perceiving and analyzing and rationalizing, understanding, all these things are functions of the mind. Beautiful functions. One feels so happy. Such a wonderful mind can do all these things. But that's not our self. Our self is using the mind, hidden, hidden behind the mind. Like the astral self is hidden inside this body, the mind is hidden inside the astral self. But we withdraw the attention from the astral self because it appears to be the same shape as this. Because we have divided the sense perceptions in the physical body, it appears to be functioning the same way unless we modify it by long stay in the astral stage then we can modify and we can start walking with the head and thinking with the feet. But that takes time. Before that, we just associate the inner self exactly in the same way as this one. But when you enter that one and discover that perceptions were a mental function, that sensory perception were merely a division of a mental function, and you have direct perception of everything, it's a great experience an experience that is unmatched, according to me. Try it out, see how it works. But that is not the end of a spiritual journey. We not found the self. Descartes was wrong. He thought we found the thinking self, that's the self. No, that's not correct. Now to go beyond the mind to your true self, which I could call the soul. The real soul will be what is using the mind using sense perceptions, using this physical body, generating experiences, physical, astral, and mental, and causal. If we can find that which is using all that, that will be ourself, which is generating life itself. Consciousness is being born out of it. So if we have to find that, to go beyond the mind, no exercise is possible. For the simple reason, to go beyond the mind, you can't use the mind. And all exercises are done with the will of the mind. You can't do anything in this world without first using your mind to do it. The mind wills it. The mind tries it. The mind does it. How can the mind do something to destroy its own self and go beyond it? Not possible. Therefore, it is possible to have an experience beyond the mind but it's not in the control of the mind. Then who can do it? Now you'll be surprised who can do it. The self that lies beyond the mind can do it. Our own self. Because that's our self is all inside hidden in the mind. If that pulls itself out of this uh, outer experience, it can experience itself. Sitting here as physical human beings here, with these three big coverings on us, the covering of the mind, the covering of the sense perceptions, and the covering of this physical body, we have no idea at all who we are. And how are we in a position to pull? 
Is there something that we can pull with, which is not mind, which is not effort? Have we ever had an experience where we are pulled somewhere without any thought, without mind, without senses, without physical effort? Has anything ever happened to us? Yes, it has. And when we fall in love, we are pulled. When we fall in love, beloved pulls, a lover pulls. We are drawn. What our thoughts are drawing? Not at all. We not even had time to think. Love pulls us, because love does not come from the mind. It comes from our higher self, the highest self. It comes from true self. Therefore, if we have to cross the mind, what pulls us? is love of the self pulling itself up. If we could know who we are, we can pull ourselves right now in one second. We don't know who we are. But did we come into this creation so stupidly that we said we should forget who we are and just cover ourselves with all these things and totally get absorbed in a temporary world temporary body, did we have no intelligence to say we should make some arrangement to get back home, to get back to our original state when we want to? I don't think we were that stupid. I think we were super intelligent. We were super intelligent to make an arrangement that even if we lock ourselves out completely, there will be some key available by which we should be able to go back to that. Since the key is love of the self, and the self generates all experiences. Therefore, the key was that we generate in every experience that we have something that occurs in experience but should be part of ourself. So what did we do? We found that love pervades everywhere. We have experience of love in dreams, experience of love in wakeful state, experience of love in imaginary state, in the astral state, experience of love in the mental state, though not a mental action, but mental state. Therefore, love pervades everywhere. So the arrangement we have made, very intelligently, super intelligently, if we want to go back to that original state, is that we can find something in the existing created, created universe that can pull us. But it should be our own self our own self, which is generating experiences, we should place our own self also in an experience outside. So we should think an experience is pulling us, but actually it should be our own self pulling. This experience is so unique. We all have a feeling about it, but we are not sure about it. The experience we have is that when love pulls us from outside this universe, that means another human being, I'm not talking of attachments to things and so on. I'm talking of love of a human being for a human being. When I mean that love pulls us, a human being, where does it lead? It leads to where the beloved is. Now supposing a human being comes into our life who strangely has a something that pulls us, and we are drawn to that human being for some reason. And the human being, instead of saying, that's great, I've met you, says, go back within yourself to find me. What does that mean? Here is a human being. We can see, feel his love. He's pulling us with his love. And what is he telling us? Find the human being outside. Find that human being inside our own self. Very odd news that somebody we're loving outside should say, find me inside. But such human beings come per our own arrangement when we are ready to discover our own self and go right inside. Such a human being, we have given a term, a perfect living master, PLM for short, 
In the United States, we use a lot of short letters, you know, for words. PLM, perfect living master. Where do these words come from? Perfect, because if that human being is really our own self projected as an outside, and our own self above the mind is perfect. Based on our studies, that all imperfections are created in time and space by the mind. And there can be no imperfection when we are out of that. <laughs> Therefore, if that human being is our own self operating outside of ourselves, and the perfection of our own self is visible there, obviously that human being will exhibit that perfection by operating from that level even as a human being. That means that person's love is coming from the true self. It's, we think it's that person's self. It's our own self, our own arrangement. Therefore, that human being whom we love says, go inside your own self and find who? Find the same whom we are loving. That's a remarkable change in the coronary course of loving universe, pe people in the universe. So when he says, go inside, if you go inside, what do we find? Just an image of the same person, like we have image of many other people. When you love somebody, you think of that person, image comes in. So we think it's a very simple thing. The person is saying, he's a living person. He's not a dead person that we are making up with our own mind. He's a living person. And he's saying something to help us. The mastery that he's giving is to go discover our own self for which he has appeared in our life. And all he's saying is, go inside. So when we imagine anybody we love, we see. So we see that person. And he talks differently than others. Others have a good time with us. Outside and inside. And this one inside says, go further inside. What is the meaning of this? When we go further inside, he says, go further inside. And then when the mind is reached, we find a pull of love, which we thought is the outside person. It's still the... And, and, and when we go beyond the mind, we find the outside person was no other than our own self. What a big discovery. What a great arrangement we have made. Super, super duper intelligence has been used. We are not stupid enough just to be locked out and not know how to go back. We made good arrangement. When does this arrangement come into effect? After all, we have been living in this life. We have lived previous lives, which we can test out. In the causal plane, which is beyond the astral plane, you will notice a very wonderful factory manufacturing destinies, manufacturing life forms, manufacturing what to do from birth to death, and making very quick DVDs. I'm using this terminology because it's physical terminology. It's a little different there, but to make it easily understood, the destinies which we live with, the way we are born and we die, is all being manufactured there. And we, not the mind, have used the mind to pick up one of them, and that's how we are here. This discovery you can make there is remarkable. This business of going within yourself and discovering who you are is the most interesting adventure you can ever have. And it's all possible. Perfect living master comes into our life when we are ready for it, ready for this adventure. When are we ready? When we are tired of the show we have been watching called life. If we are not tired, time is not yet. Enjoy more, suffer more, have the ups and downs of life. It's a roller coaster to make it very entertaining and interesting. Go jump up and jump down in life, have all the pleasures and pains of this life, enjoy it. When you say, this is, I am done with it. I am tired of it. I don't want any more of it. When that happens, perfect living master suddenly appears in our life. We can't find him. Because when we try to find, it's the mind working. 
when he appears is something else working our own self working that is why when we say we are seekers of our truth seekers of who we are seekers of the soul seekers of the ultimate truth a perfect living master automatically appears in our life through coincidences like the light went off coincidentally he appears like darkness in the light of our life the light comes when we are ready for it and we are ready when we have had enough of this experience we sometimes can't be sure if we are ready but the person who appears is more sure why because that person is more of our own self than we are today we have lost ourselves we lost ourselves into our own self a cave that we have built up and we are sitting inside the cave and thinking this is the whole world you remember that reference platonic reference about the three men in the cave they are looking at their shadows and think that is real monsters going to attack them the cave the shadows are being cast by a light behind them and a man outside comes to tell them look these are not real people that you're looking at because when you move they also move they are your shadows and what do these people say don't look back he has come to destroy us he is a conspirator with these who are in front of us he wants us to turn around so they can kill us we have to fight them that's how we are living this world we are fighting shadows all the time created from our own self from consciousness whole show is of consciousness our self is totality of consciousness and the discovery of our own self is possible with the means i have said first thing most important thing should be the feeling we have done with this we have had enough of it and we are seeking to go back home when we say i want to go to my true home where i belong beyond the mind a perfect living master will come into your life very happy to share these things with you these are perfectly possible potential things for all seekers i was very lucky to be initiated by this great master baba sawan singh and everything that i have experienced and sharing with you is based upon his teachings that how you can follow systems of meditation systems of withdrawing your attention within yourself and discover everything about yourself and everything about creation because creation is all taking place subjectively from within outside and not the other way around which you will also find by your experience thank you very much we'll have a break now and have i suppose there is some snacky stuff here enjoy some food and we'll be ready for the holidays i will at about 3:30 come back again and see you for a little while and then there are some people who been waiting for some personal meetings personal time there's not much time available today but i will see those who have come for the first time certainly and a few others so thank you very much for your patience and very patient listening to me i'll see you 3:30 again